I can name a million things I'm not. The only thing I am is real. Smoking on that real kill. Jay Cole have been at the top of the food chain for a very long time, and even in 2024, the battle for that number one spot is still very much alive. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys really loved my video where I broke down all the Kendrick and Drake disses, but something that gets over. You already know about that. That's 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 been a thing that's always been known. We all know about that. But the J. Cole and Kendrick now. That's somewhat new, bro. I never knew about this. Look, I never is knew the about ongoing this. Ongoing and current back and forth between J. Cole and Kendrick. So that's what this video is about. Now keep in mind, some of these bars are speculation, but some of them are pretty obvious. All right, so J. Cole and Kendrick's relationship goes way back to before they even released their freshman albums. Now, J. Cole did have a head start as he signed with Hove in 2009, and when he signed to The Rock, he dropped two amazing mixtapes. Bro, 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 bro. Friday Night Lights has literally a chokehold on me, man. Besides the Lil Wayne era, besides that era, it's up there in like my top five mixtapes. I was definitely a massive fan of both of those tapes. In fact, the outro track that I use on every video that I make is from Friday Night Lights. Good to see it edited correctly. Hey, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. And Blow Up Ooh. is exactly what J. Cole did. I got memories of that, that mixtape run. He found himself on the 2010 Double XL. They had Double XL in 2016? Man, I just said 2016. Oh my God, it's just stuck in my head, bro. Cole, who was in this? Cole, Nipsey Hustle, Wiz Khalifa, OJ the Juice Man, Brick Squad, okay. Freddie Gibbs, 010? How old is Freddie? 40, damn, I thought he was like 30 something, bro. Freshman cover. I got the keys to my beamer with no beanie, man. And as fate would have it, J. Cole shared that cover with an L.A. artist by the name of J-Rock. Bring your best three, I eat them like Nookie and give them hysterectomies. Check out this <laughs> cover, though. We got J. Cole, Nipsey, Wiz Khalifa, Freddie Also, Gibbs, I can't, I can't take J-Rock's voice seriously, man. They don't make them like that anymore. J-Rock just so happened to be signed to TDE. Nah, nah, really though, really though, really though. I just caught what he just said. Double XL, I ain't gonna lie. They have like a few, they have a few hits in their covers nowadays, bro. But then there'd be some people that's kind of like, yo, you should never put them on the list, bro. They're kind of ass. After 2016, that was the last good freestyle slash magazine for out of Double XL. Some people will argue 2018, yeah, it was kind of like, eh. It was like, eh. You know what I'm saying? Kind of getting resurrected, but then, you know, went right back down here which was the same label as Kendrick, and it was at that freshman cover shoot where Cole and Kendrick met for the first time. But at the time, Kendrick wasn't really buzzing, so J. Cole didn't even remember meeting him. It wasn't until months later where Cole saw Kendrick performing at a party, and he was so blown away by his skill set that he decided to approach him personally just to let him know that he was really dope. When I, when I saw him, I was like, what? When I heard him, I'm instantly like, I'm looking at Eve like, yo, this nigga's crazy. Like, I gotta, I gotta go let him know that he's, that he's ill. So they meet up, they exchange contact info, and then Kendrick would send Cole two different tracks. He sent me Pussy and Patron. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. I got into like a little bit of him, like section 80, when like um they put ADHD on GTA 5. That's the that's when I got introduced to Kendrick for real, for real. Damn, bringing back memories, man. I'm getting old, man. And he sent me uh cut you off. I'm trying to surround myself with people that inspire me. And I was like, yo, this nigga, I'm with this nigga, like, yo, this is I wanna sign this nigga. And at this point, <laughs> anyone with half a brain can see that this guy is definitely special. So Cole, being a producer, starts to hook Kendrick up with beats. And it will be one of J. Cole's beats that will go on to be Kendrick's big single for Section 80, High Power. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. Now, it was at this point- I feel like point, J. Cole's production gets so unaccredited, bro. J. Cole's a great producer, bro. Like, he makes great beats, man. Like, my favorite beat by him, bro, is the Jan January 24th. The sample, the loop, the drums, love it. Where the two decided that they were going to take it a step further, and they started planning a joint mixtape. So y'all are, are officially working on that? Yeah, we're working on that. Okay, because... In an MTV interview, got teased Jay so Cole was many quoted times. saying, Me and Kendrick are doing a whole ridiculous thing together that's going to tear up the world. That's How many records did y'all do? Uh, bro, y'all don't understand, got like maybe bro. Like four. One of the songs that they did record was called Temptations. Now, it would never get released, 
but Kendrick did preview a snippet at a Section 80 signing. Y'all don't understand, bro. That album has been teased for years. I remember I was in elementary, bro. Or like, I think I was get, getting ready to get out of elementary and going to middle school, bro. We definitely not getting it now, I know that. <laughs> we definitely not getting it now. And I mean, it's pretty clear from even the snippet that Kendrick bodied Cole on this track and even Cole admitted that. Another one I got is this song we got now called Temptations. But when I gave him the beat, it already had my verse on it. I was just like, yo, I got this crazy beat with a, with a ill verse on it, you know what I'm saying? Just do it. Yo, when I tell you, you should never give a nigga like Kendrick Lamar home court advantage. And it was during that <laughs> in-store signing nah, where gonna Kendrick the beat. previewed another song with J. Cole. Kendrick, real deal oh, rap. Yeah. Real yeah. deal yeah. rap. And they would record a bunch of other records for this project, but unfortunately, none of them would ever get released. And it wasn't until 2012 that we would hear them both on the same track, and that was on a Trey the Truth remix. Eternally Never heard for the support, made the cover of the source for your hustle was nominated, anonymous, and you faded. And just one month definitely later, gives me 2013 vibes, 20, 2012 vibes. I can definitely hear it. On the same track again, which was a DJ Khaled record. Hennessy for my enemies, niggas know I'm taking a spot. That means I've been bad about it, and this is the only thing. Look, 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 hot take, hot take. I never, I didn't start listening to DJ Khaled's albums until like the only album I listened to was the Keys one. That's the only one. The one with him. Oh, they got the song with Jay Z, Future, and all that. That's the only album I listened to by him. Other than that. Don't ask me nothing about DJ Khaled choreography, bro. I mean, not choreography, discography. What the fuck? Look, if you're subscribed to my channel, I'm gonna assume that you like to smell good. Ah, no, 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 stop, 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 first, stop, you stop. Get to the, no, 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 whole no. Bunch more. Uh, is one here for yeah, you guys? I know you gotta, you gotta get your bread, but no, 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 no. This video, no. a storm. Thank you. When he released Good Kid, Mad City. I used to be jealous. Amazing of album. Ten out of ten album. 10 out of 10 out. This is, that is, that, like, bro, oh my God, I'm stuttering. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. I just, I just love talking about this shit, bro. I love talking about music. Good Kid, Mad City, in this decade, is a top five album out of this decade. No lie. He was the one to follow. And on the day that Good Kid, Mad City dropped, J. Cole posted a tweet saying, listen, go buy Kendrick Lamar album right now, twice. Then it was on the very next day where Cole was signing albums at a Best Buy in Compton, and he posted, Cole popped up at Compton Best Buy for the signing. Dolo. Dudes don't do that. My homie for real. I've seen stories like this before where it's like J. Cole will be spotted in New York, like riding a bike by himself. Nah, J. Cole's no security, a cool dude, bro. Just he minding looks so his own humble, business. Bro. Down to earth and God, it would bro. appear that J. Cole was in LA for more than just a visit, as a few days later, Kendrick posted a tweet saying, Me and Cole was in the stew last night. And with all that said, a couple months later, Kendrick would release another song produced by J. Cole, The Jig Is Up. However, it was now time for J. Cole to shine, and he quickly dropped his sophomore Ooh, album, man. which did have man. a feature from Kendrick. Bro, that shit don't count. That shit don't count. J. Cole should have never put that nigga as a feature for that, bro. He should have gave him the credits, bro. He just did the hook. That's it. I go like that one disappointed me, bro. When I first was getting into a Born Center and I saw the Kendrick feature, I'm like, oh shit, this shit probably gonna sound crazy. And then it just, it just, Kendrick just saying the, the little hook and that's it. And then it would go back to the J. Cole's verse. I'll be like, bro, Cole, what the fuck? But Kendrick didn't even rap. He was just, he was only on the hook. What's interesting about the track, given Kendrick's presence on it, is the ongoing theme of Cole referring to himself as being the best and how he's above everyone else. Cole is the king, most definite. But when I say that I'm the greatest, I ain't talking about later. All these other niggas is below me. And look, he's supposed to think he's the best. That's just part of the game. But I just found it interesting that he's sharing the record with Kendrick. He's talking this way and Kendrick really doesn't get a chance to rap back. Mm -hmm. However, Kendrick would get a chance to rap as yeah, just two months later, strange. he completely shook the oh. industry when he dropped his control verse. Oh Usually my god, god the is verse, niggas, bro. Away, but this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. On the I didn't know I didn't know he went for J. Cole on this though. I didn't know that. I always knew the control verse was the was the verse that really did shock the industry. It's really the main part where it struck the uh, the whole Drake and versus Kendrick Lamar thing. That's what I, that's where I really know the controversy from. But I didn't know he was going at J Cole there. 
first, Kendrick calls out multiple rappers, which triggered responses mostly from just MCs that weren't cloudy, even named. But one rapper that was named and did respond was J. Cole. Thought you was a down ass bitch till I found that shit a couple days ago. I was home alone. Next thing I know, that long ass verse from a song called Control was on. Oh, In the shit. verse, oh. J. Cole paints what? the picture of a girl playing the control verse that he was close with. This is likely in reference to the big nah, splash imagine, the verse made. Imagine, imagine one of your homegirls, one of the girls you talking to, whatever, they playing your op's music. Nigga, I'm crashing. Nah, I'm not gonna lie, bro. She on the couch with it. She playing my op music. Ah! That's when I seen the shit playing on your phone. Girl, what is that, a ringtone? Shit, not you too. Man, I hate them, got you too. Cole then has a conversation with the girl, alluding to how the hype sucked her in. People like Drake would make similar remarks about the verse, saying that it was just for shock value and that it would be forgettable. Yeah, I remember him saying this. Everybody in mama gas, even my mama asked what I'm gonna do. Again, Cole makes mention to how everyone gassed up the control verse and makes it known that people that he was close with questioned him on how he would respond to it. Decisions, decisions. In case this is warning, I load up on all ammunition. Again, mm. Cole echoes mm. a similar response to Drake. You know what's crazy? I've never heard J. Cole diss anybody ever, bro. I've never really, I don't really, you don't really see J. Cole as a person to like shoot or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or to fight a nigga. You'll never see that coming from J. Cole. Then let it be real. So it's like, was that real or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but you know, at the that's same how I time, saw it. it's like, you know, then let it be real. In my opinion, then, you know, with this I mean, though, in my opinion, with the whole control, control verse with Drake, Drake took it the wrong way. I feel like Drake took it too personal, man. We know who Kendrick is as a rapper. Kendrick is very competitive in the rap game. Very competitive. He can put friendship aside and go at your fucking head. He's a damn near. He's a, like a hybrid battle rapper. He's pretty much telling niggas like, yo, just don't take this to heart. And niggas wanted to take it personal like Drake. That's all I'm saying. Because those were harsh words, right? If a nigga want problems, my triggers on auto, I'll make sure that nobody miss him. So Cole is really letting Kendrick know that if he wants to make this thing real, if he wants to take it there, that he's ready for war. The last line where he states that he's going to make sure that nobody misses him appears to be a direct response to Kendrick's verse when he said this. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. Like, they don't want to hear that one more now no verb from you niggas. Okay, maybe, maybe, damn. Maybe Drake probably does have a point. I don't know. So don't Jay know. Cole maybe. is saying, I can make you disappear. It's critical to note that when the control verse dropped, good, Cole Lonzo, felt good. obligated to reach out to Kendrick directly to try to make sense of what it was all about. I had to have a conversation with him. Hmm. So I just had to find out for myself, like, yo, what? You came at me, dog? What's that? And Kendrick did explain on many occasions that his relationship with J. Cole did not change as a result of that verse. Specifically, where are you at, like, with the J. Cole? Specifically, where you are you at? to L.A. people, too? What's that? What's LA people too? I'm probably going back to that after this video. Way to Drake or so on and so forth. I respect their music. Look at that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. And Kendrick seemingly wasn't lying as some months saw, after okay, the control bro. verse, P. Diddy allegedly tried to pour a drink on Kendrick at a party. Diddy was in a drunken state and was pissed off about Kendrick's King of New York wait, wait, line. Wait, 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 and wait, in a wait, drunken wait. state was and was pissed off about Kendrick's King of New York line and J. Cole defended him. I didn't know that fight was over Kendrick, though. I never knew that. Because the story that I was told, it was that Diddy was drunk and he was trying to fight somebody and J. Cole came and stopped the fight. And then him and Diddy and J. Cole got into the, you know what I'm saying, a little tussle or whatever, you know what I mean? It was Cole's intervention that led to the infamous scuffle between himself and Diddy. I mean, anyone out here getting in a fight with J. Cole, of all people, you're clearly just a massive piece of shit. Let's just call it for what it is. <laughs> and verse even led to. Who side you want? I ain't gonna lie. Um, oh, I hate to pick. I hate to pick a side on this, man, because they're both. Um, they're both crazy artists, bro. I can't even lie, bro. I can't even lie. It's really hard. It's really hard to even like choose a side now because J Cole evolved as a rapper so like so recently, bro. Fuck that. Pick a side. Uh, okay. Gun to the back of my head. I got. I might have to go K dot. I ain't gonna lie. I might have to go K dot. Gun to the back of my head. If I'm in a rush, I gotta choose K dot. No disrespect to J. Cole, though. No disrespect. But I got K-Dot. Good. Fuck you mean good. Hell no. Now I got J. Cole now. Not because he said it like that. Nah, fuck that, nigga. Dreamville, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. Called let go of my nah, hand. Nah, fuck you. Nah, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. Nah, let me chill. Was with Puff Daddy. Who would have thought it? 
As far as award shows for the year, Kendrick cleaned up with <laughs> BET, winning lyricists of the year, MVP of the year, and album of the year all over J. Cole. Kendrick also clinched the number one spot for MTV's hottest MC, and J. Cole didn't even make the list. That's crazy. With MTV, man, because she did not make list? the And J. Cole. Who's in that list? Kendrick, okay. Two Chains, okay. Rick Ross, okay. Nas. What year was this? This is like 2012, 2013. Why the fuck is Nas up here? Was Nas out? I wasn't listening to Nas in 2012, 2013, 20... Whatever year it was, 2013, whatever year. Mm. Nah, Cole got robbed, so like, I ain't gonna lie. Didn't even make the list. With MTV, man, because you did not make the freshman. Oh, man. But the MTV, freshman list, but the hottest Nobody really cares about right. MTV anymore. Inexcusable, man. It is inexcusable, <laughs> man. I'm like, this dude's got a gold album. Word. Like, what are you Platinum like? single, gold album, Grammy nominated, you know. You got to kind of be like, come on, son. Like, word. Yeah, it was. It just let me know, like, what that whole thing was. And I normally take these lists with a huge grain of salt. But I, I do think it's important to highlight just how many times Kendrick has won over J. Cole. Because I feel like that feeds into the chip that's on Jay Cole's just a, shoulder. Just a, like amongst the widespread of people of an audience, he's a, he's just way he's just a better rapper in my opinion, bro. He's a very more skillful rapper than J Cole, but J Cole's a way better storyteller than Kendrick. I say that. In recent years, to further confirm that the two were still on good terms, they celebrated Cole's birthday in New York together. And some months later, J. Cole brought Kendrick on stage while he was on tour in L.A. However, it was in that same year that J. Cole would release what many people Banger. would consider Banger. to be his classic album. Banger. And another, on that project, another, another generational classic, by the way. Another one. Had a few Just little saying. jabs for Kendrick. Just I don't play no games. Boy, I ain't no joke. Like the great rap Kim when I make my notes. So it's kind of similar to Kendrick's control verse where Cole is paying homage to a bunch of legends and he's putting himself in the mix. Or you might be Drizzy Drake, a kid. Whole lot of red solos. Bro, you are the craziest Cardi dick writer I've ever seen, Lonzo. This is absolutely insane. Whole lot of red is still a good album, though. It's still a good album. I would say it's like, apart, amongst like the 2020s, it's a classic. I would say that. It is a classic. That's Check right. All right, bro. You, Check the birthday, nigga. You, you are the guy. Call the guy. This line acts as a double entendre where one, Cole inserts himself as being above both Kendrick and Drake, and two, Rakim commonly goes by the God MC, and Cole just so happens to share the same birthday, January 28th. So at this point, it's just all a friendly competition in the spirit of hip hop, but it was the control verse that Cole triggered this might type of competition. J. Cole would also make it very clear on his track Fire Squad of where he felt he was at in the rap game. Ain't no way around it no more. I am the greatest. Lot of niggas set on the throne. I am the latest. Cole also makes it known that he's not afraid of anyone. I ain't afraid of you niggas. I'll end up fading you niggas. At the end of the record, J. Cole brings up the debate of who's really the king mm. and claims that the crown is his for the, the taking. The, the big three, the big three debate. Who y'all got in the big three, bro? Out of Kendrick. Blonzo, please do not say Cardi. Please do not say Cardi. I'm begging you. I'm begging, please do not say Cardi in this. I'm being dead serious. You got Drake, Kendrick, or Cole. Who you taking out of that three? And you say Cardi. People debate who's the king of this rap game. Here comes Lil Old Jermaine to snatch the crown from whoever y'all think has it. But that would not be all as J. Cole had another subliminal for right. Kendrick Fair. on GOMD. When I'm in LA, I'm the best in the West. You can test, you can test. I'm a stretch niggas out. I mean, if we're talking about the West Coast in 2014, I don't know who, I don't know who else he would be talking to other than Kendrick. However, it was in this year that, could that be a stretch, Kendrick though. would. That line could have been a stretch, but. In BET lyricists of the year again over J Cole, and everyone remembers the infamous Macklemore Grammy snub. Racist. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Biggest snow, bro. With all that said, as we head into 2015, talks like about Like Macklemore, dog? Macklemore? Who listens to Macklemore? Let's be honest, man. Who listens to Macklemore? The only song I remember is that one gay song he had, Wings, and the Thirst Shops thing. That's, that's it. Is there going to be a Kendrick Lamar J. Cole album? Man, definitely. Definitely. 
I, I, I still would love to do it for sure. I, I talked to the bro. Um, I don't know, probably a little bit over a month. And um, he's on the tour rocking, so we're going to try to make something happen. However, the closest thing we would get to a joint album would be on November 15th when both Cole and Kendrick released a song each titled Black Friday, where they're both going in on each other's beats. Let's myself with the wisdom, my player is a me no miss, so pay them in for performance. Their flows hit different chicks. Let my bricks and hoes see me fishing chips. Now the feedback that we Crazy. got from those records Crazy. was pretty well unanimous. Kendrick going so hard I forgot Cole was on it. Sheesh. Kendrick was the destruction. J. Cole was the recovery. Kendrick was rapping like his but life the, was on but the, the line. But the comments or like the uh, the opinions on the songs were going both sides. Like on on J. Cole's remix, everyone was saying, oh my gosh, Cole watched Kendrick on this shit. And then you go to the uh, Kendrick remix, it'd be like, oh my gosh, Kendrick watched Cole on this. Da -da -da. You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of went both ways there, so... And I can't disagree. He really was rapping like his life was on the line and making a statement. And I personally believe that it's the element of competition further enforced by both the fans and the media that would eventually come between these two artists. As we close out the year, J. Cole would clinch BET's Album of the Year. However, Kendrick would win Album of the Year at the Grammys. I mean, they're both phenomenal it's projects. One got a Grammy, one got a BET yes, award. I feel like this rivalry right here, hopefully it does make it to some like music history class or something. Because this is like two titans clashing right now. I'm happy with it. They both deserve it. And even in 2016, 2017, talks of this joint project is still going. There is a Kendrick Cole out. There is a Kendrick. It's in, they got it. You know what I'm saying? They got something to work. They've been working on them motherfuckers. Wow. And to make I the fans go that, even crazier with anticipation, I, I people up. got even it's more excited up. when Kendrick brought out J. Cole in Detroit. And just a few weeks later, TDE Punch would share a tweet saying, I was just playing about that Dot and Cole joint. It's coming for sure, maybe. I don't know. It might happen. Probably. Actually, hit them. This joint album got teased for years and years and years. But the fans still kept up hope as at the end of 2017, the snowman himself was able to secure a feature from both J. Cole and Kendrick for his track American Dream. Then I put it on plate, I'm running the game, you're running in place. Buy on what is known to the traveling man. However, Jeezy Crazy. approached this record a little bit Crazy. sneaky as he didn't tell Kendrick or Cole that they would both be on be the same song what? together. They be edging? Long, 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 long. You just be saying anything, bro. God. Did he know Kendrick was gonna be on it too? Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when they heard the finished product, you know, everybody kind of knew everybody was on the record. And it really makes sense because J. Cole is really rapping on his verse, yet Kendrick took this very melodic approach and isn't really rapping at all. I feel like if Kendrick heard Cole's verse or even knew Cole would be on the record, he might have decided to really rap instead or maybe it wouldn't have changed anything as the theme of this record may not have called for that level of competing. The American dream. As we close out 2017, 2018, Kendrick had a hell of a year in the awards category, winning BET's album of the year and lyricist of the year over- Out of recently too, with Dan, I'm speaking on Dan when I say this too. Dan was pretty much his last like great project in my opinion. That was, Dan was his last great project. Mr. Morales was, eh, it wasn't his best work. You know what I'm saying? After he came back from that long ass hiatus, it wasn't his best work. But I feel like it was just him like just giving his, his opinions. You know what I'm saying? What's been going on recently. For J. Cole, Kendrick would also win several Grammys, but most noteworthy <laughs> rap album of the year. And we can't forget that he was the first hip hop artist ever to win a Pulitzer Prize. Awarded to Dam by Kendrick Lamar. Like excellence right there. I see it. And now we get a line from J. Cole where he voices his opinions about the Grammys. The streets don't give a fuck about the Grammys. Yeah, nobody cares about Grammys no more. It's, 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 it's done. It's done. Grammys, no, Grammys don't matter no more. It's been proven so many times. Grammys don't even matter anymore. You could take this line however you want. Would you say that? And it will be at this point where nah, J. Cole finally shuts down the idea of a joint project and basically says that it's not gonna happen. So that's not that's not a real thing. That's like a, some fantasy thing. It's that, not. It didn't come from nowhere. It came from us. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not like 
it's something that's actively happening. And as time goes on, we get nothing but non-stop comparisons and questions of who's the better rapper. Who's the better storyteller? J. Cole or Kendrick? Greatest rapper of this generation? J. Cole or Kendrick? Who's the better rapper? J. Cole or Kendrick? And at the time, the yeah, always, overwhelming majority would light. say that, that Kendrick was the better rapper. However, head head. outside of a Black head Panther head. soundtrack and a few features, Kendrick is very much absent between the years of 2018 and 2021. And while Kendrick has his feet up, we see this epic shift in J. Cole, where he begins to reshape the narrative of who's the best. Niggas been counting me out, I'm counting my bullets, I'm loading my clips. Okay. Kill them strangers in the blood, smoke, gun smoke. Nah, this, niggas don't want in this era, like, once, I said it earlier in the video, once Kendrick hit, hit, took his hiatus, that gave, that gave Cole the opportunity to just, ha, just start rapping his ass off, rapping like the Reds do. Smoke, no guts like that, swish we just smoke. Okay, no problem, I show up on every one album, you know what the outcome will be. From this day forward, I move like, with a new ferocity. Going crazy. Yeah, I'm the GOAT, no nigga don't at me. Put on your coat, don't work up your coat. This is my year, don't say I ain't told you. This is my year, don't say I ain't told you. Something changes with J. Cole. 12 features in 2018 and 16 oh. features in 2019, and he pretty much smoked them all. Going now, crazy. the very last time these two will be heard on the same record was on Dreamville's Under the Sun, where Kendrick had an uncredited hook. I woke up for some money. And even in 2020, fans are still talking about this Kendrick and Cole project, and this time, TDE Punch totally shuts it down. One fan posted, I want Lamar on an EP with Cole. Mm. Punch responded, that's never going to happen. Another Ooh. fan then asked if they were maybe planning something bigger than an EP, to which Punch responded, zero tracks, not happening. That's crazy, cause so he went from, he went from, oh yeah, we got like four tracks lying around, to zero tracks not happening, wow. So what was once a maybe is now, just a very stern no. However, it would appear that even after all the work J. Cole put in, it still wasn't enough as he was still being cast aside when compared to Kendrick and Drake. Cole got rings, but he, I, I mean, I don't nah, put Cole, Cole one of the greatest. Level. He's one of he the is. greatest. I don't put him on the level of Drake and Kendrick. Being as competitive as he is, I feel like these opinions begin to bother J. Cole and it helps to mold the hungry uh. artist what, man? What? What? Not right now, bro. That we've seen this in recent child. years. <laughs> it's scary. around this time where I feel J. Cole asked himself a few questions like, how do I want to be remembered? How do I want to close out my legacy? And do I really want to finish this thing off with a bronze medal? Mm. I had to make a real decision. Oh, mm. Like, have you wrote your best song? Did you leave no stone unturned creatively? And when I thought about that feeling, I was like, nah, I'm not cool with that. And in my opinion, he made his choice. And this is where things but start like, to get interesting. But like, people just keep forcing him in that spot. They just keep putting him there. Like, no matter what this man Cole does, they just keep putting him in like the third place spot. Fans started to speculate that J. Cole took subliminal shots at Kendrick on his album, The Off Season. Big step, but nigga don't get stepped on. Now, there were countless posts on Reddit and people on YouTube who really felt like Big step and nigga don't get step. Oh, Mr. Morales and the big step. Oh, it makes so much sense. Oh, wow, they be sending shots and we don't just we just don't know it. The words "big step" or "don't get stepped on." was a direct reference to Kendrick's Mr. Morell and the Big yeah, Steppers. Yeah, I got it. I already However, got it. Cole's track came out 11 months before Kendrick's album title was even announced. Oh. So unless J. Cole had some inside information about the album title, I'm not sure how this theory holds much weight. I mean, huh. you guys could tell me what you think. Oh. I'm, I'm all for speculating, but I don't to remember, me, I don't it remember really got to make sense. In 2021, J. Cole would address his position of being in third place on a track titled Heaven's EP. Some people say that I'm running third, they threw the bronze at me, behind Drake and Dot, yeah, them niggas is superstars to me. 
So J. Cole acknowledges that many people consider him as being number three, but instead of tearing a strip off Kendrick or Drake, he tips his hat to them, complimenting their place in hip hop. The tale's official. The best nigga breathing it just failed to hit you. You couldn't tell cause you failed for the bells and whistles. However, Cole makes it clear that the fans got his ranking fucked up and calls himself the hardest in the game. He goes on to explain that the people fell for the bells and whistles. This could- About to make me some grilled cheese real one. Um, bro, what is that, bro? Where is that? Where did you even come from with that shit? Um, um, what is that, bro? I still, I'm still trying to get, I'm still trying to understand it. Could be alluding to the many times that he got snubbed during awards, or the fact that he's been known to do very little promo when it comes to rolling out his albums. There's just nothing flashy about J. Cole. He just looks like a normal fucking dude. And very seldom is he in the media. But that's just, that's just music. Cole's character. Too much hunger, it's no one that he- That's just how Cole is though, you know what I'm saying? He's just a down to earth, humble dude that just has bread, you know what I'm saying? He just has hella money. Obviously, he's not gonna show it though. And keep up, so saying yes to a feature just means I'm about to eat lunch, bitch. In the first line, Cole references just how hungry he's become for that number one spot. And in the second line, he alludes to the fact that every feature he does, he wraps circles around the artist requesting it. It's been exactly 1,746 days since the last time Kendrick Lamar dropped an album. Since the last time Kendrick Lamar dropped an album. 1,855 days. I've been going through something. Miss that in the city, miscommunication to keep homo detector busy. Nah. No protection is risky. After a five year hiatus on May 13th, 2022, Kendrick released that Mr. Marvin Gaye sample and the crazy. Big Steppers. The album received mixed reviews, but in my opinion, was his most personal and introspective album to date. That's yeah, it was more it was more so on the personal side. He was just giving off his his point of view on life at the current state. But as long as like a lyrical, going hard, like Rap genius type of album, nah, wasn't it? I even got a t-shirt with the album on it. That's, that's how much I like the album. Again, fans speculated that Kendrick was throwing shade at J. Cole on his track, Count Me Out. Ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. Many people seem to believe that because J. Cole's upcoming project is called The Fall Off, okay, now that might that be this a could have been a very that might be real shot. Deal this. And initially, I didn't think this was a, a shot at J. Cole, but... J. Cole appears to respond directly to this a little bit later down the line. With that said, J. Cole would appear to take more shots at Kendrick on Johnny P's caddy with Benny the Butcher. If I put your favorite rapper neck in the noose, never letting them loose. When the track initially Oof. came out, some Oof. speculated that Cole was actually Oof. dissing Benny on his own record. Man, hell but no, even bro. Benny said that hell he no, felt bro. Cole so was dumb. dissing someone else. That's so, bro, why would, why would he? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's real deals, grimy, bro. Nobody would do that. Oh, Cole, Cole wouldn't even do that shit, bro. If you ask me, he was talking to somebody. Yeah. So the guys who everybody compared him with and put him in a rink with, like, to me, that's who he's looking to. I'm probably going to go to hell if Jesus asked for a feature. In the first line, Cole makes it clear that he's bodying anyone on a feature and even claims that Jesus himself would take a loss. One person that's imitated Jesus in the past would be none other than Kendrick Lamar. Some see the glass is empty, I see a glass full of ether, collecting his bread and mash like he a Catholic preacher. This line appears to be a reference to Kendrick's yeah, okay. music video for Home. They were taking some shots, bro. They were taking some shots. A Catholic preacher, and you could see the empty glass and bread sitting on the table. Cole makes it clear that he sees a glass full of ether, which could be a reference to Nas's infamous diss to Jay Z. Oh, this shit is oh God, the best rapper alive, headshot. J. Cole ends off the verse to state that he's the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I am the greatest. That's just rapper. confidence, though, bro. That's just confidence, bro. That goes with every rapper, bro. Every rapper says he's the best rapper alive, bro. Even Laser Dim can say he's the best rapper alive, bro. Everybody can be saying that shit. Bro, a life. Not going ass. The best rappers that died. They tell you he never lied. So damn great, motherfucker. I've died. And I gotta agree with Benny. I do think mm. he is talking to someone, and that someone I feel like is Kendrick Lamar. However, in my view, one of the most obvious and direct shots to date would come on J. Cole's track, The Secret Recipe. 
Niggas fake, progressive, and woke. I started saying less. I had to stop it. Peaked how they profit off of racial stress. It's no secret. Bro, he could have the... be, been talking about BLM there, bro. Because BLM was dead ass, like, profiting off of, like, just the whole George Floyd inc incident. You know what I'm saying? I might have to bleep that out in the YouTube video, by the way. I might have to bleep that out. And then, the, like, the founder, she got caught buying a house in Beverly Hills for, like, $1.8 million or some shit like that. Crazy, bro. Themes within Kendrick's music often reflects on racial tension and the struggle that comes with it. Drake more or less labeled Kendrick as a grifter in the past, and I feel like J. Cole is taking a similar stance. Studio steppers moving extra on songs fake and rep. The first line appears to be a reference to Kendrick's Mr. Morell and the Big Steppers, where Cole calls him out for faking the funk when it comes to the message in his music. Niggas making threats and I laugh. That's cause you ain't a threat. Don't ask how I feel about no rappers. Should they okay, I guess. So again, J. Cole is not looking at any of these other rappers as a threat, but most importantly, he doesn't look at Kendrick as a threat. And now for the most baby, damning bro. piece of all, first person shooter. A lot of niggas debating my numero, not the three, not the two on the UNO. So right off rip, J. Cole makes it clear on Drake's own record that he's number one. Mm -hmm. Numero you and no, me and Drizzy this shit like the Super Bowl man. Now when J. Cole refers to himself and Drake as being the Super Bowl What two teams make it to the Super Bowl? The two best teams uh -huh. By inserting himself and Drake as being the best J. Cole is essentially omitting Kendrick from the equation entirely Like a kid that had bad from January uh -huh. to November nigga it's just you I never thought about it like that I never thought about it like that wow Damn, am I slow? And Drake supports Cole's previous Super Bowl analogy by stating that it's just him and Cole in the running. I'm naming the album to fall off. It's pretty ironic because it ain't no fall off for me. And now we get back to Kendrick's line on Count Me Out with his reference, nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And Cole makes it clear that there's no falling off for him. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K. Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? Okay, so he mentions Kendrick and Drake. But we the big three like we started a lead, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. Ooh, so this is very much a backhanded compliment. He he calls shit. himself Muhammad Ali. Now who's Muhammad Ali? Just think about that. The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. Again, as they continue to remove Kendrick wow. from the equation, they need to be prepared for what's to come. And I can almost guarantee that Kendrick will have some form of response to this record. Guaranteed. Everybody step as we're fucking it. Everybody That's breakfast weird. and I'm about to clear my plate. I mean, at this point, I don't think J. Cole can make it any more obvious who he's talking about. The crazy when it comes to his too, collab this video popped up right after the whole the whole Kendrick Metro shit, bro. That's so crazy, bro. Operation records with Drake. I know someone's gonna tell me like, oh, we'll just make better videos. Their music that people seem to overlook, right. exactly. and their track Evil Ways is another example of just that. High up in arenas where they see they faves, AKA me and Drizzy Drake, we the way. Okay. Again, Cole is okay. positioning I'm, I'm himself and Drake as being now. the top two. I see so it. if you're Kendrick Lamar, how are you to perceive this? When two of the artists that you've been up against since the beginning of your career are making these style of records. Then when we look at the reality of the situation, which is the fact that Kendrick does not like Drake, how do you expect him to respond? Hmm. Like I said, I mean, like, I'll put my entire fucking YouTube channel on the line here. Like, Kendrick will have a response to these records. I stay out of beef, see niggas' DNA get rearranged. Uh, Jay the Cole continues the, the to bait Kendrick with the crazy. line, see dude's DNA get rearranged which would be a reference to Kendrick's track, DNA. We can't continue to just ignore this, like it's not happening. I mean, there is many signs. However, J- Grilled cheese, don't send the picture, I need to see it. I need to see it. I need to write the grilled cheese. A. Cole wasn't done and even had more subliminals for Kendrick on his recent release, Might Delete Later. Niggas swear they compare, but the truth humble. They get fuck 112, you couldn't do numbers. In the first line, Cole references Whoa. how he's often- Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let me hear that one more time. Fuck 112, you couldn't do numbers. In the first line, Cole references how he's often compared with someone, and that did, someone did would should... evidently be Ken. I'm gonna get keep how wait, 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 hold on. This nigga Lonzo just said he's gonna gatekeep a grilled cheese. 
That is the most simplest. How do you gatekeep a? Oh my god, bro. Kendrick with the use no, of the word up, humble. Bitch, be humble. Up, bitch. Sit down. In the second line, Cole says you couldn't do numbers, which is in reference to Kendrick's last project, didn't, didn't where many considered like it to be a flop given the fact that it was his lowest selling album oh, in the last 10, 10 okay, years. Okay, okay, okay. I'm the one that niggas fear on the low ski. In the first line, J. Cole makes it clear that certain rappers are afraid of him on the low. This, you spelled Majestic wrong, bro. It's a J, not a G. Oh my God. This ties now perfectly Kendrick, into what Joe Budden said about Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick talking shit to anybody in the world but a nigga named Jermaine. <laughs> Heard him talking like he peers, but they grossly mistaken and it's blatant. In the second line, Cole points out directly that people think he's friends with Kendrick, but that it's blatantly obvious this is not the case. The reality of the situation is the two have not been seen in the same room together in six, seven years. Zero collaborations have happened, zero support for one another's projects, and they don't even follow each other on social media. And I don't know if they ever followed each other, but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they did. And many people would argue that J. Cole made it clear in his 2021 interview with Kevin Durant that he did not didn't you have a grilled cheese yesterday? Who? You talking about Lonzo? Lonzo probably did have a grilled cheese yesterday. I didn't have a grilled cheese though. I think I have wings, bro. I, I, I would, you know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never fucked, I, we never kicked it, you know what I mean? Like, we never really even did nothing. So like, I, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm more interested in the genuine relationship. Okay, so who does he have a relationship with today? Who's he making records with? Who's he taking pictures with? Who's he showing up on stage for? Drake. He's talking about Drake here, not not Kendrick. Back in 2020, J. Cole released somewhat of a roadmap slash schedule for his music. Based on the trajectory of what we've seen, he appears to be following this to a T. So before we get the fall off, I believe we'll be getting something in the form of a mixtape or EP called It's a Boy. Regardless, I feel like that's what he's doing with the rollout with um uh Mike Delete later. That little that little run he's doing over there is hard, bro. It's giving me like all DVD vibes, bro. If you really if you know about the all DVDs, then you know you know. So the schedule, I think it's safe to assume that not only will J Cole continue to strive for this number one spot, but that he's willing to go to whatever lengths that is needed to get there. The situation with J Cole is something very uncommon in hip hop. J. Cole's name is already cemented in the history books. He's extremely rich. He's extremely successful. The common path that we've seen with most artists is that at some point, they lose the hunger that they once had. J. Cole is an anomaly in the sense that his music is only getting better. Mm -hmm. So you gotta ask yourself, what is fueling J. Cole right and now? Cole's like what? Cole's like well, what, 35 now? Like 35, 36? And he's still going? Bro might be in his brown year, bro. I can't even the lie. The answer bro. to me is very simple. I can't even lie. But in hip hop, the gods come with their weapons. Enter J. Cole first. Enter J. Cole first. Oh, and it's a chess game. It's a chess game. Exactly. J. Cole called me. It's a chess game. game. And by the way, guys, when it comes to a company like Scentbird, for example, I'm trying to find a few key brands here for the channel. That not just work for me, but bro, work stop, for you. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, yeah. No, no more ads. No more. You're done, you're done, you're done, you're done, you're done. But I know you gotta get paid though, so I like the vid.